My practice is right now mostly sculpture based and drawing. But for years I did collage work. I did collage work based on magazine photography and postcards and all kinds of media, um, photographic material, and, uh, and watercolor. I mix the two together, I would fuse them. I'm Wageshi Motu and I'm from Kenya and um, I live in New York and Nairobi. So in my studio, the person I probably most want to be in, um, at any given point in the day. I'm focused, I'm, I'm at one with myself, I'm comfortable, I'm busy. I'm open to uh, visitations from the people who I care for the most, so my kids can come in, my husband is there, my assistant is close by. It's a very sort of intimate situation. So the studio is, is actually a really integral part of my daily life. And the best part about my studio is that it's always been close to my house, close to where I, I live and sleep. And so my studio is kind of the sort of the, the core, the heart and soul of, uh, of my daily life. The studio I have in Brooklyn right now is in Bed-Stuy. It's um, a wonderful kind of townhouse, sort of small, intimate space. It's a combination of my archive, my books, and a lot of drawing space. So I do a lot of my drawings there. I finish work there. Things that I brought in, shipped in, or that are coming in from other shows go end up in the New York studio. It's really the base as such. Recently I set up a studio in Nairobi, so I'm also working there. In that space I'm actually making sculpture more because I think the material quality in Nairobi speaks to me. I feel drawn to it in a way that I'm, I'm, I'm finding hard to explain, but I, I know that as I work with it, the results that I want are sort of coming out of me in the way that I really, really uh, love and can engage with. My Nairobi studio and my New York studio have a lot of the same materials. There's a ton of photographic materials, books that have pictures, um, historical pictures of traditional Africa, pictures of current affairs vis-a-vis um, -vis magazines, and there's also a lot of images that inspire me. I have like a lot of thinking space on the walls. I guess the one particular difference, one main difference, is that there is a ton of soil, a lot of wood, a lot of rocks, a lot of things that literally are found right around me. In Nairobi, I walk out of my studio and go get my supplies. I think most of the material was actually from fashion magazines. And then I sort of moved quite quickly in search of the female body in other kinds of magazines. So I went from sort of glamour, glossy magazines, which portray women as very sort of perfect and idealized and, um, and often very homogenous in the kinds of women they have. What I started to notice was how differently skin types were depicted depending on uh, what the audience was and what they're trying to sell. And that was where I had a lot of fun because I really got to vandalize the original narrative and to make something dignified, beautiful, unreal, and to me, attractive about these things that kind of bothered me. Tropical diseases um, are actually a big part of my, um, my growing up, believe it or not, because my mother's a nurse. She kept all these books and she has a lot of uh, books on tropical diseases and um, everything relating to that sort of region of the e equator where we are from. And I was just always very fascinated by these books because they come with these very um, fascinating but quite hideous photographs of the most extreme example of these diseases. A good day in my studio is not necessarily a good day. So a good day in my studio can be an extremely, extremely frustrating day. A day when I'm out of my mind, frustrated because I'm not getting where I want. I'm letting anxieties 
build up. I'm thinking about um, where the work is going to go. But as I proceed, and this is how I also work out my tensions and my, my, it's my, my personal therapy, I have this little ritual where I take a picture of my work just before I go because I'm a bit of an insomniac and I like to look at my picture, the picture of the work I just did and go, okay, I'm not crazy, I actually, I actually succeeded in something. So some of my best days are my worst days. A bad day in the studio is a, an interrupted day and a day that is full of the things that don't allow me to work. A bad day is just a day where I don't get to be an artist the way I want to be. When I need to get things moving and I'm not sure where to start, I usually just start to organize and clean and get things in order because that in a way, um, not only does it bring all my items and tools and everything to the forefront, I know where they are, I know what's happening, it actually helps me improve the feng shui of my space. Um, and the way I maneuver around is such a big part of how I get things done. So in my studio, I, I work from morning to evening, but I'm much more of a night person. Now that I have kids, I can work late, but I still have to consider the fact that I have to get up early in the morning. But I love working at night. I love the, the quiet and the, the spookiness. Music-wise, right now, I'm listening to uh, Buica, who is a Spanish flamenco singer, but she's actually um, African. I listen to Fela a lot. I listen to classical music. I listen to a lot of um, high-life Nigerian music. I listen to so many different things. One of the, the most peculiar and special chairs I have is like this rolling stool. I kind of use it to not only just move around, but to allow myself to swivel. And at the same time, there's nothing obstructing my movement on the sides, no arms and no back. So I have two of those. I have one on each side of the work tables. And I have a lot of stools, but those two are great because I can move, I can just like waddle around with them. My advice to artists, um, all ages, different experiences, school um, artists and professional ones, is to decide what the studio means to you and kind of give it an identity. So um, some people call their studio their battleground. Some people call it their temple. But I always think it's good to create an identity of your studio because it's not just a room, it's not just a physical space. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that you, allows you to do something very special and to turn into something that's different from when you walk out the studio. And I think for that reason, um, I always tell people, make this like a, like a brain, like a, like a, like a whole um, a method and a mechanism that allows you to, to, to think differently um, and, and make it a very cherished space. And that doesn't mean, you know, no drinking, no having sex, no doing whatever in your studio, it just means make it something that you know is is absolutely characteristically different from every everything else that you do outside